So whatever profit is accumulated by the company, so the entire thing cannot be given away as dividend. Do you see that you get a strategic advantage by the alignment of corporate and business objectives of the organization. Whenever we are thinking about financial strategy, we also have to think about decisions related to capital expenditures, dividend policy, investment, cost control and tax planning. Hello everyone, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Rate College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. In this session, we will be having a discussion on financial strategy. Now, let us understand what is the meaning of the word financial strategy. So, financial strategy deals with the availability of sources, usages and management of funds. It focuses on the alignment of financial management with the corporate and business objectives of an organization to gain strategic advantage. So, financial strategy, what is the meaning of finance? Finance is nothing but money. And how do you deal with the money? How do you acquire money? How you allocate the money? And how you make the best use of the money? So, it deals with availability of sources, sources of funds, usages of funds, and management of funds. So, how do you manage the funds? So, it focuses on alignment of financial management with the corporate. So, what is the alignment of financial management with the corporate and the business objectives? So, what are the corporate objectives? What are the business objectives? So, you bring both together and to gain a strategic advantage. So, you see that you get a strategic advantage by the alignment of corporate and business objectives of the organization. Next, what are the aims of financial strategy? So, it aims to maximize the financial value of a firm. In any financial strategy, at achieving the DC debt equity ratio by borrowing for a long time financial need and generating cash inflow internally is a crucial issue. So, the financial strategy aims to maximize the financial value of the firm. So, how do you do that? By achieving the best debt equity ratio by borrowing for long term financial needs. So, what is the best debt equity ratio? For long term, you just borrow and generating cash flow internally. So, you need to generate cash flow internally for the day to day running expenses of the organization. But if it is for a long term you are borrowing, so it is better to have a long term borrowings. Then equity financing is much preferred for related diversification whereas Desi finance is preferred for unrelated diversification. Dividend management is another dimension of financial strategy. So equity financing is much preferred for related diversification. So, when you want to diversify the business, so the best way to diversify is through equity financing. So, what is equity financing? You raise the issue issue equity shares and then you raise the finance and then you start the diversification work. Whereas, the days financing is required for unrelated diversification. So, you should know where you need to have the equity financing and where you have to have the debt financing. In addition to these both, we have the dividend management. Now, what is dividend management? So, whatever profit is accumulated by the company, so the entire thing cannot be given away as dividend. So, the company retains a part of it as the general reserve and a part of it will be in the company as retained earnings. So, which will be a source of finance for the company. So, that will give another dimension to financial strategy. Next, there are four key elements to financial strategy. In this, the first one is acquiring capital to implement strategies or sources of funds. So, we have to acquire capital. So, how do we acquire capital? Successful strategy implementation often requires additional capital. Besides net profit from operations and the sale of assets, Two basic sources of capital for an organization are debt and equity. 
So when we are identifying the sources of our finance for the organization, we come across two sources. One is the debt for the organization. Second one is through the equity. Determining an appropriate mix between the debt and equity in a firm's capital structure can be vital to successful strategy implementation. So whenever we want to have a successful strategy implementation, we have to have funds. So how do you identify the funds? How do you just identify the sources of funds? So all this will be there in this uh, financial strategy. So acquiring capital to implement strategies. So to acquire capital, to implement the strategy, we need to acquire the capital. And what are the best ways? So first thing is we get the net profit from the operations and second one is through the sale of assets. So other than these two, we also have the raising of the funds from the debt. We can also raise funds through equity. So an appropriate mix of debt and equity is essential. Then the second element is projected financial statements and budgets. Now what do we mean by a projected financial statement? A projected income statement and balance sheet allows an organization to compute projected financial ratios under various strategy implementation scenarios. So this projected balance sheet or the projected financial statement, they will help us to know what will be the exact profit of the company in the coming year. So what will be the uh, profits, what will be the revenue, what will be the expenditure. So all this we can have through the projected financial statement. Then what is this projected financial budget? A financial budget is also a document that details how funds will be obtained and spent for a specified period of time. So a financial budget is also a document that details how funds will be obtained and spent for a specific period of time. Annual budgets are most common although the period of time for a budget can range from one day to more than 10 years. So we all know that they, uh, the companies will have annual budgets but then the budget can also be made for a period of one day to a maximum of 10 years also. We can have a long term budget or a short term budget but all these are the key elements of financial strategy. Then third one is management and usage of funds. Plans and policies for the usage of funds deal with investment or asset mix decisions that is which asset to be purchased and which to dispose of etc. So here the plans and policies for the usage of funds, they deal with the investment or asset mix decisions. So whenever we deal, deal with the usage of funds, we have to see with uh, how we use the funds that is for investment or whether it's it, it is an asset mix decision. So if it is for investment, so the investment will be in securities of other companies or if it is an asset mix decision, whether you are investing in the assets. Now again in this investment of assets, we have to consider whether it is the fixed asset or whether it is a current asset. Then again we have to think of the best way of using the funds. Then which assets to be purchased and which asset to be disposed of. Then next one is some key decisions included. Now in the management of funds, we have some key decisions. The first one is investment. Now what do we mean by investment? Investment may be investing in the government bonds, investing in securities or investing in shares of other companies. So any kind of investments are included here. Then second one is fixed asset acquisition. So whether you are using the funds to acquire fixed assets, third one is current assets. That is whether you are making use of the funds to acquire the current assets for the company. Then next one is loans and advances. Whether you are acquiring the funds to give it as a loans and advances. Then next one is dividend decisions. Whether you are acquiring the funds to pay dividend to the shareholders. Lastly, the relationship with shareholders. So what is the relationship with shareholders? So that is whether you are paying dividends in the form of money or whether you are paying dividends in the form of bonus shares. So all this will have a bearing on the management and usage of funds. Then 
implementation of projects under the expansion and diversification strategies result in increase in capital expenditure. If planning is not done properly, then capital expenditure can be inefficient, leading to less than optimum utilization of resources. So, whenever we are having the implementation of projects under the expansion and diversification strategies, it results in increase in capital expenditure. So, we may have to make a heavy expenditure of capital. So, if we do not plan our capital expenditure properly, then may it may uh, lead to less optimum utilization of resources. Then we may not be making use of the resources in a best manner. So, it basically deals with decisions relating to capital expenditures, dividend policy, investment, cost control, tax planning, etc. So, whenever we are thinking about financial strategy, we also have to think about decisions related to capital expenditures, dividend policy, investment, cost control and tax planning. So, all this will be comprised in capital structure. Now, the fourth key element to financial strategy is evaluating the worth of a business. So, evaluating the worth of a business is also important financial strategy implementation because the company may acquire another firm under diversification or divest under retrench strategy. So, whenever we, we, it is important for the company to evaluate the worth of the business. Now, why it is important? Because the company may acquire another firm under diversification. So, if it wants to acquire another firm under diversification, then it should know how to value that other firm or if it is going for divest or in retrenchment strategy, then it should also know what is the value of the own firm. So, thousands of transactions occur each year in which businesses are bought or sold in the United States. In all these cases, it is necessary to establish the financial worth or cash value of a business to successfully implement strategies. So, to successfully implement strategies, we need to know what is the financial worth or the cash value of the business. Then, next is capital structure strategy. The capital can be equity capital, loan capital or the debt capital. So, we all know that capital comprises of the equity, debt and the equity capital and loan capital and the debt capital. So, equity capital provides security and free from paying interest and financial risk. Suppose you are raising equity, then you will not be paying any interest or you will not be having any financial risk. Debt capital though requires the payment of a fixed interest regularly, provides huge surplus during the periods of business boom. But when you go in for a debt capital, then the debt capital will you will be paying interest on the debt capital, but then it will be uh, resulting in huge surplus for the company. Therefore, the companies prefer to have both equity capital and debt capital. So, it will be essential or it will be beneficial for the company to go in for both equity and debt capital. Now, what is the optimum capital structure? What are the features of the capital structure? The first one is generation of maximum return on capital employed for the purpose of maximization of wealth of the equity shareholders. So, when you design a capital structure strategy, we, our main aim is to see that it maximizes the wealth of the shareholders. Then second one is excessive debt capital results in the risk of solvency of the firm. So, if you go in for an excessive debt capital, so, it may have a bearing on the solvency of the firm. The firm may not be able to honor its payments regularly. Hence, the company should limit the debt capital at a point where the risk begins. So, the company should as far as possible try to avoid the debt capital and go in for the equity capital. They should adopt a flexible structure in order to adapt the structure to the economic situations. So, they should see that they have a mix of both debt and equity capital and the strategy should be that they adapt to both the kind of structures. Then next one is the amount of debt capital should be within the capacity of the company to generate future cash flows. 
So when it goes for the debt capital, the company should take into consideration what is the future cash flow of the company. Why? Because it has to pay regular payment for the debt. Whether it is the interest or the installment of the, of the debt, it has to take into consideration what is the cash flow and then go in for the debt. Capital structure of the company should result in the control of the risk involved in debt capital. So capital structure of the company should result in control of the risk involved in debt capital. So what is the debt capital? What is the risk involved? And what is the strategy you are doing to get uh, to just control the debt? All this will be in capital structure. Thus an appropriate capital structure ca strategy helps the firm in reducing the cost of capital, risks involved in the debt capital management and encashing the equity shareholders wealth. So whenever you go in for a capital structure strategy, it helps the firm in reducing the cost of capital. Now what do we mean by cost of capital? Cost of capital refers to what is the expenditure involved in raising the capital. Now we should say that we get the cost of capital should be as low as possible, then risks involved in debt capital management and encashing and chasing the equity shareholders funds. So we try to see that we have a capital structure wherein there is maximization of the shareholders wealth. So this is relating to capital structure. With this we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed. Thank you.